Welcome to Electro Online. Starting with this video, we're going to explore a set of videos that takes advantage of the applications of derivatives, especially when we're dealing with position, velocity, and acceleration. It turns out that we can find the velocity of an object by taking the derivative of its position, and we find the acceleration of an object by taking the derivative of its velocity. So given an equation of the position of an object as a function of time, and here's the equation, we should be able to find its position at some time, its velocity at some time, and its acceleration at some time. And in addition to that, we're going to find the average velocity between time equals zero and time equals five. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to find the equation for the velocity, and that equation is equal to the derivative of the position with respect to time. And so that will be the derivative of this, which is 6t minus 12. And then to find the acceleration, we take the derivative of the velocity equation, and the acceleration as a function of time is equal to the, de the derivative of the velocity with respect to time, which is equal to 6. Now notice, since 6 does not really depend on time, it's simply a constant, that means in this case the acceleration is a constant value. Now we're going to evaluate these three functions for a particular time. So we can say that x, when time is equal to 2, is equal to, now we plug in, for every t we plug in 2 instead, so we have 3 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 1. And that would be equal to, so that would be 4 times 3, which is 12, minus 24 plus 1, which is minus 12 plus 1, which is minus 11. And the units for velocity, the units for position would be meters, and so it would be minus 11 meters. Next, we're going to evaluate the velocity equation for time equals 4. So velocity when time equals 4 is equal to, and here's our equation, it would be 6 times 4 minus 12, which is 24 minus 12, which is a positive 12, and that would be in units of meters per second. And finally, we're going to find acceleration when t equals 1. So we take our acceleration equation, acceleration when t equals 1, which is equal to simply 6, because it doesn't depend on time. Acceleration will always be 6 when time is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. So it makes no difference. What about the average velocity? Well, that depends if we want to think of velocity as a vector quantity or velocity as simply a scalar. If we think of it as a vector quantity, then the velocity average, which then would be a vector quantity, and we're going to find the absolute value of that, that would be equal to the absolute value of the, initial, the final position, and that would be vector quantity, minus the initial position, all divided by the elapsed time, which would be t final minus t initial. And we want to take the absolute value of that. So what we're doing here is we're actually finding the displacement during that time period and dividing that displa displacement by that time period of five seconds. So this can now be written as follows. So where are we at when we take our final position? That would be the position when time equals five. So let's figure that out x when time equals 5 is equal to, that would be, using the same equation right here, 3 times 5 squared minus 12 times 5 and plus 1. So that would be equal to 25 times 3, which is 75, minus 60, and then plus 1. So it would be 15 plus 1, which is equal to 16. And of course, that would be meters. And then we do it again when time is equal to zero. So we be three times zero squared minus 12 times zero plus one, and that simply would be equal to one. So now we plug it into our equation here, and better yet, what I'm going to do instead of doing it like this, let me go ahead and take the absolute value of these. So that would be uh, 16 for the final position minus one, for the initial position divided by the elapsed time of five seconds, which is 15 divided by five, which is three. And of course, the units for velocity would be meters per second. So here we have to be careful. 
If we're going to find the average velocity, we want to know if we want to use vector quantities or we want to use scalar quantities. If we want to use vector quantities, then we want to know the difference in the displacement, the final position minus the initial position, irregardless of what we did in between, divided by the total time elapsed. And that's typically what they're asking for when they want to find the average velocity. So that's how it's done. We take our position equation, find the velocity equation, find the acceleration equation, then we can evaluate those for particular values in time, and then to find the average velocity, we use the vector quantities converted to scalars to, to uh, express the total displacement divided by the total time. And that's how it's done.